And now, without much ado, I'd like us to welcome Pragati Sharma, who will be making her presentation this morning um, on midwifery leadership as a strategy for workforce development. So Pragati is a nurse midwife public health consultant working for the improvement of maternal health. She's currently working with WHO headquarters to provide technical and coordination support for the ninth WHO ICN ICM triad meeting. Her most recent role has been with the Office of Chief Nurse WHO to build and sustain the virtual nursing and midwifery global community of practice, focusing mostly on the midwifery aspect. Prior to that, she was with WHO India as an assistant program director for midwifery leadership program, where she supported a 12 week training on midwifery leadership for state leaders. In India, she also supported the national midwifery initiative and other in-country projects around midwifery education and services. She is passionate about quality, equitable, and respectful care for maternal and reproductive health, particularly midwifery, and has a wide range of experience in public health in the SRMNCAH area in India and abroad. She's an advocate for midwifery services for normal labor and birth. Last few years of her work has been around midwifery, education, services, and leadership. So welcome, Pragati Sharma. Thank you, Caroline. Thank you so much for that lovely introduction. So um, Pragati, I'll make you into, um, I need to make you into um, Pragati. I need to make you a presenter. Are you able to scroll the slides, Pragati? Uh, not yet, Caroline. Can you see the arrows yet, Pragati? Not yet. Okay. Now that? I make... now I can. Okay. Okay, Pragati. May I start, Carol? Yes, please. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Carol. And good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all our listeners and viewers who have joined in from different parts of the world. Um, I'm going to talk specifically about the uh, midwifery leadership program uh, in India that uh, I was part of and I was very uh, lucky to have contributed to. It was an honor working with government of India and WHO and other senior midwifery leaders in the field. And I'm going to just talk briefly about that and just talk about how uh, leadership can be a strategy for policy change for midwives and for midwifery in general. So in the last two years, we've had two big reports uh, being launched, one by World Health Organization, uh, Strategic Direction of Nursing and Midwifery, which has a five-year uh, strategic priorities that our member states could follow and then implement in the country context. And we had another, uh, another big report launched by UNDP in collaboration with other partners like International Confederation of Midwives, WHO, uh, called State of World Midwifery Report 2021. So both these reports are the uh, a step, a global strategic direction for nursing and midwifery presents evidence-based practices that are interrelated to a set of policy priorities. So in total, it has uh, four strategic directions and 12 policy priorities out of which leadership is one of these strategic directions. It has two policy priorities. So basically, it talks about providing and giving opportunities for midwives to be trained as midwifery leaders so that they can have a at the policy table and they can they can keep their viewpoint uh, representing midwifery workforce at the policy table 
The other one is creating programming opportunities for midwives who, uh, for for enhancing and empowering themselves as midwifery leaders. And WHO basically endorses for government positions for midwifery leaders and uh, chief nursing officers present at the Ministry of Health. The State of World Midwifery Report is also has similar priorities and sets up uh, recommendations for what can be done to enhance the capacity of midwifery for workforce to enhance the leadership capacities. So uh, this is just to give a background on how leadership has been, been important in the midwifery workforce and this is the way forward. So uh, starting with the India program and what was the India program about, it was, so I'll start with giving a bit of a context on how uh, the Government of India launched the Midwifery Initiative. So the Government of India's Midwifery Initiative was launched in 2018 and it aimed in uh, training midwives who were called nurse practitioner in midwifery to become uh, registered midwives who could practice yeah. on their own. And they also had a program separately to train midwifery educators who could educate the midwifery practitioners when they were in training period. So this started, the policy decision was taken in 2018 and the implementation started in 2019. And as and when the implementation started, there was uh, a need was felt by the government and by other stakeholders that midwives will benefit and, and the country will benefit moving towards universal health care and uh, achieving the SDGs in empowering midwives and giving them a, a table at the policy making, giving them a place at the policy making table. So this is how the midwifery leadership in, uh, in India came came into, uh, you know, came into being. That's how it was conceptualized to begin with. So this began as a pilot program coordinated by WHO Country Office for India and was announced on 8th March 2021 on International Women's Day. And I guess that is very apt because 93% uh, of the midwifery workforce is women. And I think most of us who are present today uh, are women as well. Uh, no offense to our <laughs> male counterparts, but I think majority of the midwifery workforce is women. So it's a very uh, interconnected, gender interconnected uh, space as well. It, I think it was very apt to be launched on International uh, uh, Women's Day. So uh, I was very fortunate to uh, co-facilitate the program alongside Jane Salvage, who was program director. Jane Salvage is an independent consultant and she's from the United, uh, UK. And uh, we also had guest faculty from uh, WHO headquarters, uh, Ms. Elizabeth Iro, who is the chief nurse at WHO, and uh, Ms. Matt Fran McConville, who is midwifery free advisor at World Health Organization. And the program ran over 12 weeks, and we had uh, 21 participants from all over the country as a pilot program. So this is just to give a view to the global audience on where all uh, the participants came from in India. They, they came from in uh, seven states, uh, six states, and the national capital. And we had three participants from each state. Uh, the reason to specify this is because uh, the way midwifery is, uh, you know, stationed in India, the program is stationed in India is uh, we have involvement of both private and public health facilities and both private and public uh, educational institutions. So the uh, Center of Excellence for Midway Free, the first one is a not-for-profit organization, Fernandez Foundation in Telangana, and they are the first one who started training the Midway Free educators and the Midway Free practitioners. And even for this uh, program, we had a representation from three different pillars of Midway Free, one from the council, one from the education, and uh, one from the private sector. So. When we had these three rep representation, we made sure that midwifery as a policy priority in India got percolated to every sector and every stakeholder in the state so that they had a wide network amongst them to collaborate. And when, when their leadership capacity is enhanced, they could also help other counterparts to enhance leadership capacity. And also another, uh, an, another stretch, they could, as a trio, uh, advocate 
for midwifery to the government, to the parliamentarians, and even to the community, uh, as because this is beginning in India just just in the last one, one and a half year. The program aimed to uh, reduce maternal and newborn mortality and morbidity and improve the quality of care. And specifically, the leadership program aimed at by supporting state level midwifery free and nursing leaders to implement the government of India's will be free initiative. The program objectives were to support and plan for sustained implementation of government of midway free initiative. So this leadership uh, course was specifically designed around the government of India will be free leadership and now it's being uh, taken into account uh, to build a global standard uh, document which focuses on a standardized training module for uh, midwifery leaders all across the globe, which then countries can standardize based on the local context. So now uh, WHO is implementing this in another five countries uh, after, after it was done in India. So it was uh, the second objective was to build the individual and collective leadership capacity of senior nurse midwives and that's why we, we had a session that focused on their individual capacity and their capacity also as trios, like three people from one state. And also it was to advocate and evaluate the program in six states of India, uh, like I mentioned earlier. So the long-term output of this leadership program was to have an active state leadership team who could advocate for midwifery in general and to have a a current maternal and newborn health action plan so that they could have a, have an action plan ready and then they could start implementing them in another one two three years and however it was possible and then in 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 going along with time they keep advancing and prioritizing and amending their uh, action plan based on how the state is moving in maternal health indicators and with free training where the state is positioned The program also, when we began the program, we wanted uh, the senior midwifery leaders to connect with each other and talk to each other uh, from different states about what they are doing. We had examples while we were in the training uh, from a state who, who met the health minister and then that, that was so inspiring that other states also wanted to do that and they, they had it began in this state as well. So this is uh, sort of how to initiate a policy dialogue among a wider audience specifically one who specifically the stakeholders who have political influence within their own state so i think this program helped them a lot in that and eventually to have them also connect to other global midwifery leaders through a dedicated platform which i'll be talking about it in some time the participants we had um, were very senior nursing and midwifery leaders. I say nursing and midwifery leaders because currently India has just started the midwifery leadership program and we don't have midwives yet who have come out from the government of sector, but the existing nursing midwifery, uh, nursing midwifery partner in India are both nurses and registered midwives. So that's why I'm calling them nurse midwives just to give a bit of context to, to, our, to our listeners. So we had directors of state nursing councils participate, midwifery society presidents, principles of uh, nursing colleges from both private and government sector. We had hospital attendants and nurse practitioner and midwifery who had just recently come out of the training program, uh, the Government of India Midwifery Training Initiative. As I already mentioned, the pro program was uh, planned for over 12 weeks. We had each participant join as a trio uh, on one week, one day of the week, and as a as an individual on another day of the week, and they had four dedicated hours uh, for that day, and then for the remainder of the week, they would work on the assignments, on collecting data, triangulating data, and working on the evidence around midway free. So uh, we also had an evaluation, um, and it was done by. Uh, uh, Southeast Asia Regional Office, and hopefully it will be published soon, and you'll all be able to uh, view what it says. And the next step is the five country leadership program, which is underway, which I mentioned about, and to have the uh, midway free leadership training program standardized so it could percolate down to the global level. So, presently, uh, I can also share the link with you in the chat box there. Or, and I think the slide will 
also be available to to to, to all the listeners and viewers on the platform. So when we when we finished this program, uh, we got a lot of interest from uh, the midwifery leaders to connect among each other to learn from each other. So they had set up a WhatsApp group and they would meet every every second Wednesday of every month, even after the training training program was over. So we thought they would benefit from having a, a platform where they could interact with other midwifery leaders from different countries. So this is just the initiation and uh, WHO headquarters under the leadership of Elizabeth Ayo, the chief nurse, has initiated uh, this uh, this project. It is. It is a virtual platform created for uh, nurses and midwives to come together and connect and network among themselves. Uh, it is called the Nursing and Midwifery Global Community of Practice. The link is hyperlinked uh, in the text where I have written Nursing and Midwifery Global Community of Practice. So it is open to all nurses and midwives and even other stakeholders who are uh, closely connected with nursing and midwifery uh, policies in their countries and states. So for this uh, group of midwifery leaders in India, we have a private group created for them. And if, in time, when the five country program uh, gets started and when we have programs in other countries, most of the members from other countries will also be added and they'll have a wider network where they could share and connect about their uh, midwifery learnings, the challenges they are facing, because uh, even though we are different in geography, but I'm sure the challenges would be very much similar and the way to success would also be of a similar path. So uh, just to give, just to end this on a very happy note, we had unsolicited feedback from all the midwifery leadership program participants in India after the program ended, and and they all found it uh, very very beneficial. These are two of our very active uh, midwifery leaders from the state of Assam and from the state of Telangana, and 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 they could actually take forward much of the work they did in their um, action plan while they were training to take that forward in the state. And I just wanted to say happy International Day of the Midwife to all of you. And thank you so much for patiently listening. I'd be happy to answer if you have any questions. And thank you, Caroline. Um, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Bragati. That was a, an awesome presentation. Um, this is a very great initiative and I'm, I'm sure that um, it's something that will really benefit um, other midwives, um, midwife leaders from other countries. And um, I, I, I hope that this program, um, many of the people you know, on this platform will be able to join the community of practice to just see what it is all about and just to further engage and interact with, with other leaders from, from India and across the globe. Um, just a quick one from me, from what I've gathered um, I, I want to believe that um, the the training uh, uh, used uh, training of trainers approach so that they could they can be able to cascade the knowledge to the other team leaders um, in their you know places of work and organizations and that way you create a critical mass of trained um, leaders who will you know cascade the knowledge downwards. Um, instead of just the 21 who come in for this particular program. Uh, thanks, thanks, Karen, for your question. And, and to answer that, yes, the training is intended for them to share their knowledge, but they were not trained as trainers as such. Mm -hmm. Because uh, the context of the program that this, this MLP, the Midwife Leadership Program, was built was a little different than how. Uh, other leadership programs are. So we wanted leaders to be attached to the National Midwifery Program so they could push for the program in different states. And in India, because health is a state subject, the federal government, the central government has uh, cannot interfere much. So we wanted them to be flag bearers of what happens in the state. So although, although the expectations are that they, in, the, in soft capacity, they train their counterparts, in the states but not as a formal approach a more okay. formal approach will be taken uh, hopefully by the government of india in taking this forward in the next budget budget cycle okay. all right thank you thank you very much um the floor is open for any questions and i can see we have a resources slide there where we can see the reports um that have been mentioned and the links are there with us any questions from the floor, kindly um, put them in the public chat and we'll be able to pick them up.
Any questions? I can see someone is typing. Somebody is typing. We have several thank yous. Um, uh, there is uh, very good feedback. <laughs> Uh, the presentation, amazing work. Um, it's a good initiative to have midwives. Thank you. Voices had Thank on the you, table. Jane. Thank, Thank you, Jane. Thank you, Catherine. Yeah. This is a good initiative because, um, like Catherine has said, it's good to have them on the table uh, because uh, you'll be able to negotiate when it comes to policy making. Um, you'll be able to look at the policies that are there. Are they um, relevant to the work that you're doing? And you're able to, you know, um, make any changes or yeah, uh, include areas in which we know have not been um, covered probably by the policy makers when they're passing some, you know, um, making these policies and strategies. Absolutely. And I think, yeah. Now it's starting to change, but I think in the past when midwifery policies were made, in most instances, there were no midwives as part of the mm. technical team or the mm. advisory group or, mm. or the task force. So it was all done by people who were not midwives, but the policy was being framed for midwives. So I think mm. the top-down approach ha is now changing, but needs okay. a lot more change as well. So I think this could be one of the steps for India. and. Mm. And I mean, as a change, I would not directly, you know, connect that to this program. But as a change, mm, you can see mm, that mm, midwives mm. are part of the task force mm. initiative in India, and they mm. they, they, they have uh, like Indian Nursing Council, the Society of Midwives in India. They all come together when there are bigger meetings for midwifery policy decisions, mm. and you know they are being heard. Uh, and slowly it's it's begun and midwives are being empowered and we all have a say in the policies that are being framed for us. Okay. Um, a few more minutes for um, a few more questions. Someone was typing. <laughs> 